May it please the people to allow me to continue the introduction of the matter before the court. And that matter, it is an urgent matter as it was said. However, the reality of that matter is that none of its terms have been met by the judiciary of the Republic of South Africa since 30 December 2020 to this date, 9 August 2022. And the terms of the matter do not change. It was a prayer in which the court was requested an order declaring that the first defendant must respect, protect, promote and fulfill the plaintiff's rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights. You would understand here is the plaintiff and the first defendant is the state. In this particular order, you would find that to this day, and in any event, the state has failed to fulfill the obligations imposed by the Constitution. So now, we have a reality in which, in each term, when the judge responds to this prayer, it is the reality that you have seen. When I go to court and say, I request the state to respect, protect, promote, and fulfill my rights, I get sent to jail. When I go to court and say, I request the state to respect, protect, and promote, and fulfill my rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights, I get sent to a mental institution. And that is the reality before you all. It is the reality of the administrative government under the leadership of the incumbent Madame Ella Cyril Ramaphosa, who is now under arrest. It is true that we cannot deviate from the prayers explicitly set forth before the record of court, which sought an order declaring that the plaintiff has an inherent dignity and the right to have his dignity respected and protected. Declaring that the plaintiff has the right to life, when you ask, give me my right to life, the table of non derogable rights protects such a right entirely. You are told, no, go to a mental institution before we can give you that right under the administration of the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa. Good people, we are not dealing with an issue of incompetence here we are dealing with corruption and corruption is in its nature is a crime against the well-being of the state the well-being of all of you the well-being of the people who had had to answer my call when i say kindly assist with whatever your financial circumstances may allow you to spare it has not been well under the leadership of the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa. And you must understand it to be true, that whatever that is written before the record of court does not change. It remains that it is, as it is, even for a hundred years to come. Now that is when you would understand the reality when I tell you that judges have been bribed not to declare that I have the right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be tortured in any way. They refuse to grant me an order declaring that the plaintiff and no one must be subjected to slavery, servitude, or forced labor. Right now, as I make this particular recording or broadcast to all of you, you would find it to be true that I am subjected into forced labor, for I am without payment of my salary, as the court knows it. We are in the reality where we need to face facts as they are. You have a dispute before you. It tells you that people have stopped my salary. 
You say, no, uh, okay, let's keep the reality that they have stopped your salary and let's t- wait for them to play whatever games that they are playing. So continue to be without your salary. That is the reality. That is the reality that the courts have been saying to me and everybody else who knows me and the Republic of South Africa. This is the corruption in critical capabilities which must be arrested through immediate directed interventions. Immediate, on its own, it does mean urgent. Some people would want to argue with that. No, immediately means after three months, after four years. Yeah, it's immediate. Uh, stay without your salary after three years. Uh, no, no. When I can you stay without your salary after a month? No, I can't. I can't. Are we equal? No, we are. We are. We are. We, what are you saying? We are equal. That is a joke that I have seen in the courts of laws by the incumbent judicial officers that have denied me this inalienable right. Whatever that they will say, they will tell you, ah, he asked me to eh, eh, protect my rights. I, I sent him to mental institution. No, you, you are crazy. You want me to protect your rights? Eh, eh, give me my children. I, I sent him to mental institution. No, you want me to give you your children? Give me my man. I, I sent him to mental institution. No, you want me to give you your money. I am not guilty. No, you sent him to mental institution. You, you, you are not guilty of a crime. You are guilty. So that is the reality that has been before all of you at play. To a point that many of you think that I go to court and say, hey, I don't want my children. Many of you are caused to believe that I go to court and say, I am not a soldier. I am not Sylvester. I am not Volani. I am not Madala. Mm, don't call me. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm not Mangolele. Don't, don't, don't do it. That is the reality that you've been seeing. It doesn't matter whatever English that is employed. Hey, he did this. He didn't do this. Why, where are my children? Which court can deny a father its children? In a democratic republic, democracy means you can speak your voice. Democracy means you have your rights. Democracy is a cornerstone in which the Bill of Rights holds it. Without the Bill of Rights, you don't have democracy. Children are defined in terms of the Bill of Rights. Judges don't know that. Ah, you want your children dismissed, not eject, struck from the rock. The papers are not correct. I've read the papers; they are not correct. They say you want your children. I did not see that part. Okay, okay, okay. I did not see that part. Mm-mm. You want your children? I, 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 you want your children? I, I, you want your children or dismissed? That is the incompetence that I have seen in the judiciary of the Republic of South Africa. And it is embarrassing to record such a reality in which when a person prays to court and say, court, make an order declaring the obligations imposed by the Constitution and compel the second defendant, which is the president, to by proclamation declare the replacement of the terms, let us live and and strive for freedom in South Africa, our land, with the terms. Let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home, in the national anthem of the republic. And he says, you do not have a right to say so. And people are happy about it. Yeah, Mangalala did not win in court. Yeah, he did not do it. He did not do it. He did not get his children. Hey, 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 Ramaphosa. Hey, Ramaphosa. 
I, I, I mean, it, that is ridiculous and absurd. It cannot follow that you rejoice that my children do not come home. It cannot follow that you rejoice the negative. It really cannot follow. As it is inhumane, cruel, and degrading in every way. Find those terms in the Constitution and the rule of law and come back to me. I cannot be in a position where I argue about my children and their existence. As you all know, however I am recording this for generations to come and for you all to understand the reality of my prayers advanced before the record of court and the reality that you have all seen. Is it dignity for a senior officer to be asking their subordinates for financial assistance? It is not. However, that is the, has been the reality that has been perpetually supported by the administrative function of the incumbent president. Cyril Ramaphosa, who clearly refuses to have the courts declare the obligations imposed by the South African Defense Review 2014 and compel the state to arrest the decline in critical capabilities through immediate directed interventions by sending other defendants to jail for life upon conviction of torture. An order that has been sought declaring that the term that the first defendant must remove second defendant from office on the grounds of a serious violation of the constitution or the law serious misconduct or inability to perform the functions of office and compel the National Assembly to fulfill the obligations imposed in terms of Section 89 of the Constitution. The reality of this particular matter has been in the record of court and the court has simply, simply refused to uphold, defend, and respect the Constitution as the supreme law of the Republic. I need not to say it otherwise, and I need to be candid with any of you in this regard. The Defense Force does not tolerate oppression of one by another. The Defense Force does not tolerate the derogation from the Constitution. And the court refuses to declare that the first defendant must ensure that all organs of state, including the defendants, must fulfill their respective constitutional mandate. You have a problem. In which that the declaration that the second defendant, which is the president, must cancel the permanent commission of Vice Admiral Fangwani and Colonel Mandela for crimes against the state and the administration of justice is not fulfilled. They have been protected. And you have been thinking, no, Mangolele is not doing well in the courts. Mangolele is not saying the things that must be said. Whereas everything is actually in accordance with the Constitution and the law. This prayer speaks directly to Section 54 of the Defense Act. 
a prayer declaring that the second defendant must remove from office the third and seventh defendant for crimes against the state and the administration of justice is a prayer that I am fulfilling right now as an individual and as a juristic person and the defense force of the Republic. And we will compare the Minister of Police to process without delay case number SAPS uh, 155 of 2020, registered on 2020 May 20th at Kuma Police Station, declaring that the plaintiff, which is myself, as security of tenure to land and property at number 4 Cable Hill Road, Summons Town 7975 and comparable redress. You don't come to my house, take my belongings out and put them on the streets and think that you are a hero of the nation and you must be saluted accordingly. It is inconsistent with the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law. That is why the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is under arrest and everybody else must excuse constitutional order in the Democratic Republic of South Africa. We have indeed arrived in the manner where the court will declare that I have the security of tenure in that particular land and declaring the immediate retrospective reinstatement of my salary, benefit, and allowances to be paid into the banking account that you see there within three days of granting the order. And due to the fact of the nature and its extremacy and its length within the jurisprudence, you would understand it to be true that these particular prayers have been reduced to two days. And it is true that when you come to the reality before this court, this was on the 30th day of December 2020. What did the Honorable Tulare J do in that particular regard? Vexation. You don't have legal grounds. The state attorney, in terms of Rule 49 of the Uniform Rules of Court, has received this particular matter. For all parties, as represented in the record of court. I was arrested on the 21st of January 2022, after this matter was refused to be heard by the High Court of Cape Town. The reality is that the High Court has told itself that uh, they will not listen to me. They will do everything in their power to delay me and then no one who comes to court representing themselves will win. That is the modus of operandi that is happening in the High Court of the Western Cape, in the High Court of Pretoria and Gauteng. We're having a systematic issue that is happening in the free state. However, in full confidence of the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law, we shall deal with that issue in accordance with the Constitution and the law. And we do trust that the Honorable Court does understand a sworn statement that has been made on 24 February 2011 to include the defense and protection of the Constitution or the law and everything in the Republic. You must understand it to be true that when we are in situ where we act disciplined. These are the terms that are advanced. 
And these terms were advanced and shall be advanced again, and they shall remain as they are, as they have been remained, as they have remained as they are. The original of this particular reality is with the head of Polsma prison at medium A. The office there too has this original in which one has taken over as president. Time shall come, time shall prevail for you to hear my voice proclaiming these particular terms if I over, as I have already proclaimed them. It is indeed true that Petrus Pakamilesito as a citizen with the duties imposed upon him by the Constitution and the law, in terms of Section 83, stood up and came to bring this particular notice of motion and then said, we cannot be in a position where we allow a liar to lead the nation. And he has indeed made an application to the court for an order declaring that the respondent is guilty of contravening Section 83 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Act 108 of 1996, in that the respondent did not uphold defend and respect the Constitution of the, as the supreme law of the Republic and did not promote the unity of the nation and that which will advance the Republic, resulting in a serious violation of the Constitution or the law, serious misconduct or inability to perform the functions of office. Petros Pagamilesito has sought an order against Madame Elaceral Ramaphosa declaring that the respondent is guilty of contravening section 4 be read with section 1, 2, 3, 7, 1, B, 24, 25, 26, 1, A1, and 26, 3 of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act 12 of 2004. Activities relating to public office for the abuse of position of authority or breach of trust or the violation of legal duty or set of rules. That is the truth before the record of God. That is what the court knows about the incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa from Pakamilesit. This particular matter was brought to my matter, which includes all of you, as the Mangolele family, in pursuit of justice, in the interest of justice in which the whole regard of it was such that a notice of motion was made by myself fulfilling my individual duty together with my family in sort of our human and people's rights to contribute to the best of our abilities at all times and at all levels to the promotion and achievement of African unity by making an urgent application to this court in terms of section 18 of the Superior Courts Act, this court being the Free State High Court Division in Bloemfontein. For an order compelling the Constitutional Court of the Republic of South Africa to uphold, defend, 
and respect that in terms of Section 34 of the Constitution, everyone has the right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the application of law decided in a fair public hearing before a court or where appropriate, like in the National Peace Commission, another independent and impartial tribunal of our the second prayer that was advanced was by the third applicant calling upon the incumbent president to show cause to the charges advanced by him in terms of section 83 of the constitution and in terms of the prevention and combating of corrupt activities act we have many issues in this regard, where you would find that Petros Pagamile Sito's founding affidavit is in page 13 of this particular matter. And as it is in page 13 of this particular matter, it is the reality before the court. And that particular reality is undeniable. As undeniable as it is, Petros Pakamile Sito has besieged the Honorable Court to, in terms of Section 172 of the Constitution, declare that any law or conduct that is inconsistent with the Constitution is invalid to the extent of its inconsistency, and make an, any order that is just and equitable, including an order limiting the retrospective event of the declaration of invalidity or any order suspending the declaration of invalidity for any period and on any condition to allow a competent authority to correct the defect. A competent authority in this regard, you would find it to be the National Assembly whose duties will be fulfilled by the National Peace Commission in terms of Chapter 4 of the Constitution. It is true that these prayers were made. It is true that the response was made in terms of Rule 65D3 of the Uniform Rules by the second responder. The second respondent in this regard is the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa. It needs to be understood by all that this is the reality being advanced by the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa, as the second defendant. And he says, Kindly take notice that I, as the second respondent, give notice in terms of Uniform Rule 65D3 of, and I intend to raise and make the following questions and submissions of law at the hearing on this matter. He begins with locus standi. In beginning with that locus standi, he avers, applicants do not have a standing in law to seek the relief as set out in the prayers of the notice of motion dated 25 July 2022. That is what the Honorable Incumbent Ramaphosa is saying as the President of our Republic. He says all applicants, they do not have a standing in law. Let's go back. It says here all applicants do not have a standing in law. In simple terms, all applicants cannot pray to
to the court to compel the Constitutional Court of the Republic to uphold, defend and respect that in terms of Section 34 of the Constitution, everyone has the right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the application of law decided in a fair public hearing before a court or where appropriate another independent and impartial tribunal of order. That is the reality that we are facing. That is the ability of our incumbent president for him to uphold defend and respect the Constitution as the supreme law. That is his capability to promote the unity of the nation and that which will advance the Republic. That is what draws us to the applicable terms of removal and the dissolution of Parliament. I want to say it otherwise. I cannot. You need to understand the realities of the terms and that when we come to terms we must come to terms and it is common terms that are commonly understood by all. Now you are told that the applicants, who are the applicants? The first applicant, Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele, the Mangolele family, which is the second applicant, Epitros Pagamile Sito, which is the third applicant. They do not have a standing in law to seek the relief. We will come to the date. And I will come back to this reality. As coming back to this reality, you will understand that in the original, as I have said it before, my children are of paramount importance. Their best interests are of paramount importance. And it must be understood as such that any law or conduct that is inconsistent with this loving reality is invalid. Any law or conduct that seeks to divide the father from their children is invalid. These are the mothers of my children, the mother of Aluta Songelwa, the mother of Nyiko Mangolele. And the reality is that in Chapter 2 of the Bill of Rights at Section 28, a child's best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning the child. And every child has the right to be protected from maltreatment, neglect, abuse, or degradation, to be protected from exploitative labor, and to have the right to family care or parental care or to appropriate alternative care when removed from family environment. It is that particular truth that these ladies must uphold and access to court in that particular regard. It is indeed true that everyone has a right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the application of law decided in a fair public hearing before a court or where appropriate another independent and impartial tribunal or forum. And antithetical, to the avenments advanced by the second respondent in the matter. We cannot deviate from just administrative action. We cannot deviate from the reality of Watin Tumfazi, Watin Timbogoto. We cannot deviate from the Bill of Rights. We cannot deviate from the defense and service of our country and its people in accordance with the Constitution and the law. We have a duty in which I, as the sixth president 
Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Madala Volani Mangolele shall lead you peacefully to the land of milk and honey as promised in our lives. And it is indeed true that Papa Ute and as Papa Aliting you must understand the reality that I am indeed the sixth president of the Republic of South Africa and am removing the incumbent president, Madame La Cyril Ramaphosa, in accordance with the Constitution and the law. It is true that Nyuko Mangolele, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. And yet indeed, Aluta Songelwa is your sister. She is, the daughter, she is the daughter of your father, but not the daughter of your mother. As you are the Alpha, she is the Omega. And contrary to the slogan, Aluta Continua, your sister, my son, is Aluta Stop Nonsense. Her presence in our lives directly or indirectly contributed to the freedom of Africans and in particular fellow South Africans to live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. Since Section 12.1D of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Act 108 of 1996, provides that everyone has the right to freedom of security and, and security of the person which includes the right not to be tortured in any way. The state must respect, protect, promote, and fulfill the rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights as obligated in terms of Section 7.2 of the Constitution. And the state has the duty to promote the awareness of the prohibition against torture, aimed at the prevention and combating of torture as mandated in terms of Section 9.1 of the Prevention and Combating of Torture of Peasants Act and number 13 of 2013. And whereas it is true that Section 44 of the Torture of Peasants Act for the prevention and combating thereof provides that no that no exceptional circumstances whatsoever, including but not limited to a state of war, a state a threat of war, international internal political instability, national security or any state of emergency may be invoked as a justification for torture. And Section 4.5 of the same Act guarantees that no one shall be punished for disobeying an order to commit torture. It is like that. Ceteris peribas. Cesante regione legis cesatip salax. All other things being equal, reason is the soul of law. And when the reason of any particular law ceases, so does the law. Therefore today, the 9th of August 2022, this matter to delay it and not hear or resolve it by the application of law, constitute a direct assault to the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law, and divides the unity of the Republic to operate in silos and not as one. As Sutherland J. put it, in my view, there is indeed a constitutional guarantee that the lawfulness of a deprivation by the state of the personal liberty of any person may be brought before a court without any intermediary procedure being compulsory. The source of that guarantee is to be found 
in section 12.1a of the constitution which provides that everyone has the right to freedom and security of person which includes the right not to be deprived of freedom arbitrarily or without just cause read with section 34 which I have already alluded to you. We have a reality in which applications are made in terms of the rules. And in terms as envisaged by this particular rule advanced by the incumbent fifth president as the second respondent in the matter, we have a reality in which is questioning or intends to raise any question of law, only he has delivered his intention to do so within the time stated in the preceding uh, order made by the Honorable Matebula J. It is indeed true that they have complied seemingly to the order. However, their avenues advance are inconsistent with the avenues on record of court. And in such, where an application cannot be properly be decided on affidavit, the court may dismiss the application or make such order as to which seems meet with a view to ensuring a just and expeditious decision in particular, but without affecting the generality of their foregoing. It may direct that oral evidence be had on specified issues with a view to resolving any dispute of fact and to that end may order any deponent to appear personally or grant leave for him or any other person to be subpoenaed to appear and be examined and cross-examined as a witness or it may refer the matter to trial with appropriate directions as to pleadings or definitions of issues or otherwise. This is the reality before the court. This is the reality that we are having. This is the reality where the incumbent president, the incumbent chief justice, the incumbent speaker of parliament must come to court on the 25th day of August 2022. In understanding that, I will issue in terms of Rule 38, a subpoena. I am this person. This is my mother and brother. We have a reality in which things have happened. And having those particular things happening, we have a reality in which I have just summarily responded to the incompetence of the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa, where he was expected to respond paragraph by paragraph to the matter in record of court, he said, we do not have a right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the application of law decided in a fair public hearing. He tells me that I do not have children, that I, my family, which is all of you, more than 60 million fellow South Africans, do not have a right to see me with my children, Nico Aluta and Aluta. You need to understand the reality that in order for Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volani Mangolele and the Defense Force, the Republic of South Africa and all its people to see me with my children, all the obstacles in that regard must be removed and have been removed on record of court in terms of the irregularity that they have made you witness at 
Rule 30 of the Uniform Rules of Court. Good people, God bless you. Papa Oteng, the video link to this particular matter will be included in the papers on the record of court. Please support wherever that you can. I am in dire need of financial support to execute this particular matter and bring an end to this malaminse. My phone number is 0848359161. Please do assist where you can. The people that have stole my money are not embarrassed to be subjecting all of you to live and struggle, strive or attempt for freedom in South Africa, our land. I am not embarrassed to be asking for your financial assistance to make you and your children and all people for generations to come to live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. I am a disciplined military force. I protect the territorial integrity, national sovereignty and democracy, democracy of our republic. And all of you, and all that you hold dear, I respect, protect, promote and fulfill the obligations imposed in the Bill of Rights as envisaged in terms of Section 237 of the Constitution, which obligates that all constitutional obligations must be performed diligently and without delay. That is all that I ask. I shall advance my averments in terms of the heads of arguments, and I shall request a full bench to look at the matter, having regard on the second averments that were advanced by the second respondent in terms of Section 21B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act. I demand that Section 21C of the Vexatious Proceedings Act be put into effect. Just simple. Let us not say, hey, you are vexatious, you can't come to court. You are vexatious, you can't have your children. You are vexatious, you must remain hungry, that's stupid. I am not stupid. I am not stupid. I can read. I serve and defend my country and its people in accordance with the Constitution and the law and with honor, dignity, courage, and integrity. And all those who have been saying you are vexatious, you are dutifully removed from office. For you do not know the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law. You do not know governance in terms of Chapter 3 of the Constitution. You do not know public administration in terms of Chapter 10 of the Constitution. You do not know the judiciary in terms of Chapter 8 of the Constitution, public service to be in terms of Chapter 7 of the Constitution, and the provincial service, the national executive, and parliament to be in terms of Chapter 6, 5, and 4, respectively. You do not know that the people of South Africa deserve better. And charity begins at home. And so it shall be that at home people will live as equals as the people in town. People at home in the rural areas shall have water in their respective houses. They shall have toilets, flushing toilets, in their respective houses. They will not be recorded as people in the rural areas when we live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home. They shall be recorded as equal people before the law, people with the requirements of equal service and people with requirements of equal treatment, benefit and protection of the law. We are not going to use the law as an instrument to protect people from a malamin say, which is wrong itself. Good people, God bless you all. Papa. Okay. Let us enjoy freedom. Let us thank our mother for giving us a wonderful constitution. Let us thank our father for raising up to be who we are today. Let us be all proud to be Africans. We are united. 
God bless you. Papa Ote.